Hey, Josh. What's up, man? Hey, dude. Not much. Why don't you have any of your stupid lights on? Ever since surgery, I just I can't get around the room to plug them in and stuff. What surgery? Ah, uh, the, the hip surgery I had last week. Have you not been watching our channel? I literally post about it every day. I don't watch this shit. Are you kidding? You don't. You don't watch our own show? No, I watch Joe Rogan and good shows. You're gonna want to watch today's episode, though. Let me tell you what. Okay. Today's episode, we got a great guest. His name's Joe Fells. Great dude. Yeah, he did go to jail for a little bit, but awesome guy. And I think people are really going to enjoy his second story. Welcome to Second Story, everybody. I'm Josh Sabalski. With me, as always, is Corey Leckie. Corey, what's going on? Nothing, man. What's going on with you? Just living, buddy. Just living. Today we got a special guest with us, and I just realized that I forgot the pronunciation of your last name, so I might completely mess it up, but that's okay. We got with us today, uh, influencer, real estate extraordinaire, I don't know what else to call you, Joe Fells. Joe, what's going on? Man, uh, drinking a beer in my van. <laughs> how'd i do how, how'd i do on your last name did i get was i close Dude, you know what you nailed it and the craziest thing about it it's the z fucks him up if it was f-e-l-s everybody knock it out of the park fells yeah it's got, <laughs> you got it there, yeah. dog. it actually Sweet. is german german well Very it seemed nice. like fells to me i don't know i don't know where the confusion was well i'm dyslexic okay. <laughs> the confusion was for me so you thought it was ness <laughs> Yeah, no, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, so Joe is uh, probably, I would have to put you down as one of the most interesting people that I've ever come across. Your story, just really everything about what it is that you're doing. So I'm very excited to talk to you and we're very excited to have you here today. So we are second story. Of course, we like to talk to people who have gone, undergone a major change in their life that sent them down a different path. You've had a few. You've talked about, well, you've talked to me about them. We're going to try to narrow it down to maybe one or two today. So we're going to start with your second story. So the floor is yours, Joe. <coughs> well, I like you said, I've had a few second stories, but I think the most marked and contrasting one would be, you know, going from fresh out of prison to self-made millionaire in a span of about 10 years. I mean... <clears throat> I got out of prison on uh, eight, nine, ten, uh, and I was penniless. I had fifty dollars, the clothes on my back, and the love of my family. Uh, I paroled out to the house I grew up in in uh, Augusta, Sandy Run Court, it's where Sandy Run Original comes from. Uh, that was on eight, nine, ten, and then again on eight, nine, twenty-two, I packed everything in a van, disillusioned with modern life, and left for the West Coast a self-made millionaire and a bit of a real estate mogul right here in Augusta. So just to give people an idea of how you've done in real estate at this point in time, how many properties, how many real estate properties do you have? If you don't mind saying. I really don't keep up with it, but it's 65 ish. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I really don't. It, I'm, how much money's in your bank account? I have, you know, I have no fucking clue enough. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but, but really 60, 65 ish. Most of them are in uh, Georgia. Uh, I do have vacation Airbnbs in Tennessee and Washington state. I did have one in Carolina, but I sold it because me and the HOA didn't quite see eye to eye. Um, but uh, man, I have them. Most of them are rental properties. Some of them are vacant lots that I bought to speculate on. But the vast majority are cash flowing rental properties. And I uh, only have four mortgages right now. Um, all have come in the last four years. I bought 50 houses without a single mortgage, um, over 50 houses. I probably bought and sold myself, just myself, around 100 to 150 houses without the use of a single mortgage. Yeah, that's bonkers. So something that always comes across by social media stuff is uh tends to be real estate moguls and a lot of it at least from my perspective a lot of it is like guys in suits kind of sleazy they sort of remind you of like the the lawyer type yeah there you go um 
<laughs> for our audio listeners, let's just say Joe's making a sign. We'll just yeah, we'll call some, it sign yeah, language. Some kind of yeah. hand gesture. Some kind yeah. of hand gesture. Yeah. yeah. Some Thank kind you. of hand Thank gesture. You. <laughs> sure, that's yeah, a that's yeah. a really nice way to put it for our audio <laughs> listeners. Yeah. Uh, yes. for the creeps, they they obviously can see what's going on. Um, they know what I'm so, doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the creeps. I'm know sure they're aware. Yeah, I'm sure they're aware. Uh so it, it's I, I find it kind of interesting because I, I found you through the algorithm because I am somebody who's interested in real estate. I do get like a, the Grant Cardone types, uh, the Chris Crone types, these real estate moguls who dress nice, fancy cars, the whole deal. And then there was you that came in and you are not those things. And that immediately piqued my interest <laughs> because you're kind of everything that they're not. And I think that's awesome. So. A lot of people want to know nowadays, how, do, how does somebody make money in real estate? How do they make a fortune? And what sort of story did they have to get there? So for you, let's start at the beginning. Let's go all the way back. We're going to start with your childhood. So I, I know your origins, but let's, uh, let's get into it. So where now? were you born? What was your childhood like? Uh, well, well, I'll <laughs> tell you where. Did, do you, uh, did you tell Corey where I was born? Because if not, I want yeah. you to guess, Corey. Where, I told you, you know, Corey. Did you? I don't yes. listen. Hey, yet, so. Dude, this this shit is not good for the old memory, but it's great for everything else. <laughs> okay. I'm not going to guess. You'll... You tell me. In a van? <laughs> Were you born in a van? I wasn't that cool. <laughs> Pretty close. Uh... <laughs> I wish I had. I might have been conceived in one. You never know. But well, I, uh... <laughs> <clears throat> I was born in Papua New Guinea. Um my parents were uh, missionaries to tribes right. over there in, in Ukarumpa that were eating each other two generations prior. These were longtime headhunters and cannibals, man, and they lived in huts. I was born in a little like single wide rundown trailer that was dropped off there. And to put it in perspective, when I was born, they took the placenta outside and threw it in a hole. My dad delivered me, I almost died in childbirth uh complications my dad had to pull me out with the forceps an unapproved medical technique in ukarumpa papua new guinea uh and my entire life has been a fight ever since my dad was a medical doctor man believe it or not he uh he was never really concerned with money he wouldn't get paid shit over there and he took a residency in rockford illinois where they lived for a while and then uh they eventually came down to MCG. That's how we got to Augusta. Um, <clears throat> and I'm, I'm a Richmond County boy. Um, you know, I'm a real rough and tumble guy, but I'm the only one like this in my family. Like, I come from a pretty, like, well, I'm not going to say normal. Everybody <laughs> in my family is an absolute stud. I did not know that until I left and have been all around the world. But everybody in my family is a stud. My dad was a sub three-hour marathon runner. My mother has a black belt in American kickboxing and has the ESPN app installed with notifications. She road tripped to the national championship game on three days notice and watched Bama beat uh, Bama lose to Georgia the first time. Like, we're all nuts. She's 72 and she's still going like that. Um, oh. Your but, brother, too. Your brother was a, is a lawyer, right? My brother is partner at Alston and Bird. I uh, hope he doesn't mind me saying that. Um, but he is partner in Alston Bird. That was a company that defended Apple in the San Bernardino iPhone shooting. He does intellectual property law, data privacy stuff. He's a very secretive individual. I don't know what all he does, but he's up to something. So, <laughs> <laughs> my shout out bro to your brother. <laughs> my brother Tim is an absolute stud. My brother Tim, let me give him a shout out. He wrote a book and was the first van lifer. He spent nine months in a Volkswagen bus he built himself. Touring the U.S., getting uh, vendors for his online startup, Ungrocery, and nice. wrote a book wow. about it, dude. And read the book. I'm telling you, it's called Top Dead Center. You got to read it. It's phenomenal. Um, That's awesome. That sounds good. My uncle Paul's a national champion kickboxer. Was in the Guinness Book of World Records for skateboarding. Uh, he's also a pretty renowned mosaic artist. Look him up. New School Mosaics. Paul Pierman. Uh, Axel Rose <laughs> has seven of his belt buckles. Rolling Stone, like he's, yeah. So wow. I come from a kind of interesting family. Uh, yeah. But <laughs> I didn't do, <laughs> people don't never, like people don't get it. I grew up there. We didn't have a TV. We went to church and we were outdoors. Like we were 
we were raised like we was in the fifties, dude. Looking back on it, my whole life I've really just wanted to be fucking cool. Like <laughs> I never really gave <laughs> shit about school. I don't. It just seemed like a bunch of bullshit to me. It always has. It's always been a fucking game to me. Like in retrospect, I've seen through their fucking shit my whole life, and I've never, I've never cared. Your dad obviously was pretty educated. How did he feel about something like that? You kind of uh, questioning, like through your childhood, just kind of questioning school and stuff like that. What was your dad's <sighs> no, opinion? No, of that? so no, oh no, my parents were on me, dude. I mean, I had great, I great great parents hated them growing up oh boy uh i mean very strict very strict at one point in my life later on we'll get there later i was kicked out of my parents house for rolling a joint of catnip catnip <laughs> catnip what were you gonna do with it what were you gonna do with it that's what yeah yeah you show, yeah okay mom i was gonna smoke that shit i mean uh, what <laughs> what do you mean that's what i'm saying like <laughs> but but is that what's very, in that joint right there no, this is West Coast Oregano. Oregano, um, <laughs> West Coast Oregano. Uh, you know what they say, man? A quarter a day keeps a doctor away. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There you go. So I, I got a quick question around yeah. like your childhood. Like I, you've been quoted to say that you've always had an entrepreneurial spirit. You've always had that entrepreneurial drive. Um, how far back does that go in your mind? Look here, homeboy. I was selling candy to kids in middle school. Okay. And I actually, well, well, see, when I say entrepreneurial, I'm a different type of entrepreneur because I don't give a fuck about money. Okay. I could not tell you until now because I looked him up. I couldn't tell you how much I've made a single year of my life. And mm -hmm. I've never said this before in a public forum until now. Other than a a, a small period where I had to for tax purposes, where I drew two hundred and forty nine dollars uh, a week. I have never drawn a salary of any kind out of any company that I own, and I am live like a pauper. That's how I am. Um, nice. I live in a van. I'm standing in it right now. I I bought this off of a guy working on his moped on Highway Fifty Six. The videos on Instagram. Look it up. <laughs> i found these in a camper last week um and what the, i'm saying the jeans are the boots the jeans are the boots no you didn't see these dude these are these are hold on can i i gotta pan down dude yeah yeah go for these, it these yeah. are these are um vintage joggers <laughs> oh nice with the jacket oh, they're, it's they're, a good they're, look. they're wind they're windbreakers dude these yeah, things are more 90s style. than will smith dog um <laughs> 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 I'm Those telling you. Yeah, yeah that's uh, good stuff. If it's but, not about money, like, what's it about then? Can uh, can you say about for me one more time, sir? <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> just, one, just one more. I'll answer it. But... <laughs> if it's not about money, what's it about? <laughs> A boot? Oh, boy. It's not about. <laughs> how, how do you say it? About? If it's not uh -huh. about. <laughs> You know, it's so funny. Alex and I have this conversation all the time because she says I say things funny like window pain. And she'd be like, what'd you say? Window. I'd be like, yeah. window pain. About? Uh -huh. About? That's not a word we'd say all fucked up. It's got to end in an R. If it ends in an R, nah, dog. Half of it getting cut off. <laughs> 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 right. but, but what is it about? I'll be honest yeah. with you, man. Well, a few things about me. One, I am highly competitive. Okay. I'm highly competitive. Um, and this is a game everybody on earth is playing. Everybody. Whether you know it or not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all playing. Yeah. And, you know, like, I mean, that's, a, that's the thing. And in America, as a man, whether you know it or not, you are conditioned. Get money, fuck bitches. That's what you're, like, fed in your brain. No matter what your parents teach you, that's what you were fed by American media. Get money, fuck bitches, rise to the top. That's it. Um, yeah. And so, like, that's where we are. Like, we're competitive, and men are naturally competitive. And, yeah, I am. I'm a little guy, but I'm competitive. And I'm good <laughs> at winning. Like, I won a lot of shit in my life. Um, and so, yeah, I like to compete. And two, the more money I have, the less money shitbags can have, like oil companies. 
this is a giant tool. And if I get a whole lot of it, I can control it. And if I control a lot of property, motherfucker, if you don't like your neighbors, just pick them. That's been a Joe Fells quote for a long time. Where I'm parked right now, I own 22 houses in that neighborhood. I got a neighborhood watch built in. Um, <laughs> it's, it's called having a village. And then, you know, lastly, I think God lets me get blessed with money because he knows I'm not driven by the love of money. And if I ever get some, I'll do something great with it. Like, I don't know, buy a thousand acres of rainforest and employ the indigenous tribes to shoot anybody on site that goes out there. You know, like something crazy with it that that sane or more normal minds would never do. Yeah. So, I mean, then I'm serious about that. I, uh, I like just being free, man. Money's a, f it's smoke and mirrors, guys. That's what it is. Money is just fucking smoke and mirrors. You have never comprehended this in your life, but all it takes is two people to have a bad day and hit a wrong button. If these are the presidents of two countries and all the power goes out, you ain't got no more motherfucking money. You understand? Yeah. And the only reason that money has value is because we all agree it has money. It doesn't even exist. It's it's literally your imagination, but we're so deep in it that you yeah. can't you don't even know you're in it, bro. That's how yeah. deep it goes. And like I just I don't know why. I just if you can tell, I can tell by the look on your face. I just, you know I don't exist there and I never have. Yeah. Yeah. It's faith, right? That's what money is. That's kind of what I expect you to say. I expected you to say it's it's about gaining that freedom. So I fucking hate money, dude. I really do. If you think about it, money has caused more bullshit than anything else. And it is the main leading destruction or the main money is the main leading cause of the destruction of planet Earth. That's it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Pretty That's much what I'm yeah. saying. People are trying to what they're cutting down the rainforest to grow more cows to do what? to sell beef, to make fat people fatter. Like what the fuck? I just can't. Yeah. So I'll get animated out of that because it pisses me off to no fucking end. This episode is brought to you by Bad Workwear North America. Bad is a fashion forward workwear brand from Australia with a wide selection of workwear for men and women that's not only durable and functional, but stylish and modern as well. With items like slim fit work pants, waterproof hoodies, and a robust women's lineup, you're sure to find something you'll love. They offer free returns and exchanges on all orders. And listeners of this show, you can use the code Second Story at checkout to get 10% off your first order at badnorthamerica.com. To jump back to your childhood, because you and I talked about this when we spoke on the phone. Yeah. You were, you're obviously very competitive, but you were, as a child, very prolific athlete, right? Still, sir, I still, <laughs> still I am. You're still an athlete, but back in the yeah, day, man. you you had scholarships, right, to go to, to, go to school? So I... I had a chance to, I did, I, I never had an academic, I mean, a, a athletic scholarship. I had two academic scholarships that I went to University of Georgia on. When I was in high school, I was a standout wrestler. Um, I also, no lie, was our starting nose guard at five foot four, 140 ish pounds. Um, and I was a starter on the varsity of the football team, too. And I was a scrapper, dog. Everybody knew it. Um, I had a chance to wrestle uh, in college. Coach Lane got me an audition, and the, the discussion was, if you get this, you'll get a quarter ride, and they'll pay for your books. And it was uh, at UNC Chapel Hill, because that's where he wrestled. He knew somebody. And I think I didn't lose a match that year until state. I injured my shoulder, hip-tossing the kid, tore my trap out a little bit, standard shit. But I, I was a good wrestler, and I remember – he was talking to me on Friday. He said, hey, tryouts are tomorrow. Here's where you go. And you need to be there this early for your drug tests and everything. And I was like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? Hey, what you what you talk about, Coach Lane? They think I take steroids? Uh, shit, I wrestled 119 pounds. No. Oh, you can't smoke. Oh, I ain't even go. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> How preposterous. Y'all motherfuckers want me to weigh 125 pounds during college and I can't even smoke no weed? Fuck that. <laughs> 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 and I was uh, promptly kicked out of the University of Georgia my second semester for cannabis, hash, and mushrooms. Okay. 
Lost uh Yeah, man. I I was. That was my first felony charges. Oh, it was a fel okay. That's where I happened. So dude. All right, so that kind of gets into your story a little bit. So you mentioned first felony charges. First felony charge. How old were you at that point? So I think I was 17. So I graduated in 04 and 05. No, class of 04. And I turned. So 04, fucking math is hard. 86. You know, I was. So I graduated when I was 18. 17. Yeah, I was 18. So I was 18 okay. when that happened, man. Um, and, uh, I remember, dude, it's so fucked up, man. I stand out. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> no, not you. <laughs> okay. And yes, I've sir. been like this my whole life. When I was in elementary school, we had show and tell back then. You know what I brought for show and tell? A 22 Snake. pound snapping turtle that we caught okay. in the creek. And back then they let we demonstrated. I brought snakes, dude. I was I was well known. They called me Okie Finoki Joe. I mean, I always stood <laughs> out. When I was eleven, I caught two copperheads barehanded by myself at a church picnic. Um, it was published in a family. It was published in a magazine back then. Focus on the family. My dad did. It was a church thing. Um, <laughs> we, said, we need to find that. But uh, is you holding two snakes? <laughs> no, yeah, uh, I caught two copperheads barehanded and wasn't bit. Yeah. That's kind of oh, yeah. Yeah, that's wild. ironic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah. uh a man, um yeah, dude, when I went to UGA, I I stood out. I was in the top form. I stayed in nine twenty nine Creswell. Um, and I dude, I tell you, it was amazing. I grew up without a TV in Augusta, Georgia, in a sheltered conservative Christian home, and I was now at the University of Georgia. I had arrived. <laughs> like <laughs> dude. <laughs> It was like a three to one girl to guy ratio in the freshman class and like a uh -uh, three to two hot girl to guy ratio. Dude, the, the goods were odd and the odds were good. Like, I mean, yeah, man. And it's like dude, Rump Springer. Dude, it was literally the sense of like, I'm kind of tripping back a little bit thinking about it, man. I haven't thought about this stuff in years. Like I really haven't. I haven't thought about this part of it in years, guys. And, so like it was a sense of freedom like I'd never known exhilarating. Um, you know, I've been grinding my whole motherfucking life. Uh when I was 15, the running, I used to wake up at night at 12, 1, 2 in the morning, just bursting with energy, and I just go run around the neighborhood. Literally. And one night my dad had a premonition, like, hey, you know, let me go check on my son. He woke up and I have kids now. We've all done it. Uh I do it and he yeah. came down and I was gone. Now we're talking, this is in 2002, you know, and I know what, now I know why he was freaking the fuck out. You go down there have, with a bad gut feeling, your kid's gone. You know, there's no yeah. cell phones or nothing, no word. No. And then I come back, oh, I was just on a run. What's wrong, dad? And he's freaking out. They started taking me to psychiatrists around that time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> At least you didn't uh, come back with snakes on well, that one. <laughs> you know, and man, so like I I'd been you know, fucking training and wrestling and working. And, you know, I graduated number nine in my class. You know, I went to UGA on two academic scholarships. I was not a very driven student, but I was always training or doing something. I went to the governor's honors program when I was a junior. And that's one of the most prestigious things you can do academically in high school. Uh, they send you to mm -hmm. Valdosta State to college for a summer. Look it up uh, and you'll see what I'm talking about. I mean, it was a pretty big deal. Um, and so I really never even thought about all that shit. It just kind of hit my shoulder and rolled off. It really, like in retrospect, my whole life, I never really felt like I was doing anything. I don't know, maybe because I was the black sheep of my family. I definitely was and still am. Um, and, you know, if I just had a clean slate, I knew, I only knew a few people, you know, it was a clean slate. I could be whoever I wanted to be. And I have always just wanted to be fucking cool. And it's hard <laughs> when you're the church family. Yeah. But, mm -hmm. but at Westside <laughs> High School, the Fells brothers, me and Tim, I mean, we were like, yeah, they, they knew us. I, I mean, we were popular in high school. I got two senior superlatives. You know, rule is you can only get one, but I was given two awards for most talkative and class clown. 
<laughs> really? <laughs> there, was, there was no, I mean, the results were unanimous. I mean, there was no second place. It was a hundred. <laughs> um, you got your felony charge when you were 18, your first one. Did that lead to any prison time or what happened no, with that? No, I pled first offender on that. Um, and I, I, I wound up getting probation uh first offender is five years probation if i would have completed it you know clean slate you know type deal um i had a good attorney and i mean it was it was weed and hash and mushrooms like who gives a fuck these are called plants dog (laughs) yeah nowadays it'd be absolutely well Well, maybe not so much in some states but yeah it, it wouldn't be such a big deal well i'd like to point something out though they're wrong yeah, I mean, they're yeah, just all wrong. Like yeah. during hey, during during the Salem witch trials, they thought they were right, and during slavery, they thought they were right, and during the Spanish Inquisition, they thought they were right, but they were just fucking wrong. And all it took yeah. was a little bit of time. And look, yeah. hey, they're fucking wrong. I'm telling you, just wait for a few more old white guys to die. Duh. Uh, so, what was your second charge? So, just to give people an idea, there's more than one. So we'll get into. I don't know if we'll get into each one, but we'll, well kind of go down down the timeline a little bit. So that one, I think the next one, and I'm going to go out and go ahead and say for the things I've been charged with criminally, except for one possible exception, I have never committed a goddamn crime. Not in my mind. I'm just here to tell you, like, I really haven't. I've never done anything to anyone. What I have done has literally, what I did would literally be considered minding your own fucking business in most parts of the world. (laughs) Like... Yeah, the next time I got in trouble was the only time that I ever really did anything bad. And I feel I felt terrible about this. I have made amends for it. I went out to the church and I, I stroke him a check. I looked the pastor in the eye. She didn't even know who I was as a different pastor. I've made this more than right, but I have felt so bad about it because it's literally like, in my mind, the only sin I've ever committed to this level. Like... I shouldn't have done this, man. Like I, I, I did wrong to a place that was so good to me. It was a church campground out there in Lincoln County that I grew up going to, and it was closed. The Corps engineers, the fucking government, didn't renew their lease, and so you, you know, they were going to tear down the A frames and everything. And so we just went out there and we we're partying, and we got really hammered, and we went and we shot a, a fire extinguisher off in one of the A frames. Is old raggedy A frame condemned to be tore down? But like we vandalized this place. We kicked in a door. Um, nothing, nothing terrible, but that was it. And there was a family reunion coming out there the next day. It just so happened they got there. Cars are all there. They called the cops. I get arrested. But uh, that was just misdemeanors. Dude, and those cops were good, man. Like, I'll be honest. They were good. They let us load up in the car. And the girl, one of the girls named Ashley, they let her drive and follow them to jail. So we didn't have to pay to get the car towed. I mean, like in That's retrospect. That's pretty nice cop. Yeah. And he, I remember he looked at, he says, guys, I'm doing this because I got a daughter. And I'd want him to give him this option. Do not run. And we, <laughs> and we were all like, you know, I've run from the cops five times on foot and only been caught twice. Fuck them. Um, like, <laughs> man, uh, the next one was probably the biggest crock of shit you'd ever see in your life. But I was smoking weed and drinking beer at a place known as Hippie's Cove out there in South <laughs> and, uh, out there at Clark Hill, Lake Thurman, whatever the fuck they call it now. And, uh. The DNR, the Federal uh, Enforcement Division, was watching me with binoculars from a boat. Okay. They pulled up on me. But literally, it's just me and my girlfriend. (laughs) Literally. Yeah. It was like it was. Okay, literally, and we we had more than an ounce of cannabis. Why? Uh, well, like, well, I mean, duh, like you get punished, like cause it's cheaper that way. What do you mean, duh? Like, yeah. fuck. <laughs> yeah. If they had waited an hour, it would have been less than an hour. But that's right? what I'm saying. Like, literally, we're sitting there, and they those fucking ass clowns waited for me to go down. They literally, this would did those fucking ass clowns. I went down and I jumped in the water and I cooled off. It was in May or July, 
it was in the summertime. It's hot down south now. And <laughs> I went and I sat on a rock. I was sitting on a rock and I had a towel. I took a towel. I wrapped it around me. And I took my shorts off and I wrung them out and I'm sitting them on this rock to dry. And I literally, I'm sitting them like that. And these motherfuckers pull up on me in a boat. Uh, uh -huh. Well, and you know, after, and they literally got out and said, where's the dope? What are you doing? What do you mean? What am I doing? I'm fucking, what are, I'm sitting in the sun on the bank of the lake. Like, what? Fuck you, man. You know, like I didn't yeah. tell him that. I was scared shitless. Like, uh. <laughs> Dude, that's the thing. I'm an 18. Year Dude, you think about it. I'm an 18 year old kid, drunk, drunk off my ass, fucking swimming in the lake. Like right. I'm literally minding my own fucking business to the nth degree. And they are sitting out there with binoculars watching me. Now, look yeah. at this. There's a fucking guy enjoying life and swimming in the lake. And here's your tax dollars at work watching you like the fucking Gestapo. Yeah. Paying the peeping toms. Yeah. Dude, it's just, it, it blows my mind. It's the most unjust fucking crock of shit I've ever thought about, dude. And this is the type of shit that stole my innocence, man. Like, I was a real yeah. tender hearted Southern boy now. And you can tell by talking to me, I'm a lot to fuck with right now, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. And, and, yeah. and, like, because, dude, like, if you take a dog when he's young and you fucking kick him a lot, He's going to be mean when he gets older, I promise. And he's not going to yeah. give a fuck about your feelings. And, yeah. man, when when you've been, tre been treated like that by these people, fuck them. And so, well, if you pull up on me in a boat and tell me you're going to take me to jail, what do you think I do? I looked at this fucking sack of shit caught behind me, and I said, beat your feet, motherfucker. Doom. <laughs> and so I took <laughs> off and I ran. I was coming up this hill, and my daddy always taught me, pass him on the hill, son. That's a fails thing. We run hills. We do not run on flat ground. We're not pussies. Um, and I coming on this hill and I was like, oh boy, Smokey ain't gonna get me him. And I got them. I kicked my sandals off and I scooped them up like that. And he said, don't do it. I said, fuck you. And I took off. And I got in my car. And uh, when I hit the, uh, I got my car, was so drunk, man. I, re I pulled right off the thing. And I went down, I went, I pulled out of the parking lot and I went out and I was like, oh shit, dude, <laughs> you just ran from the cops. <laughs> like, oh fuck. And I was like, I pulled yeah. off immediately and went down and pulled off in the woods and passed out. And, uh, I had a boat. I did not know. They also had a helicopter. <laughs> that was a good move. Oh. It's a real good move. <laughs> <laughs> it's a veteran so, move right there. So. What are we up to? Three? Is that three or four? So, I lost count. But I, man, I had another. Uh, I had another. I think like a little minor of possession, another little misdemeanor charge or something, something stupid. It was dumb probation violation. But then the big one, the last one happened prophetically, out there in Lincoln County, the same place we weren't at the church campground. It was down here. We passed it and went on down the road to the dead end, we're dead into the lake. And that's where it happened. You know, we were in a pretty bad car accident and uh, they went to take me to jail. I called my mama, man. It's one of the most heart wrenching times of my life, dude. I called my mama and I remember telling her, I said, uh, I was talking to her. Uh, so Rebecca had, you know, she had quit breathing, man. I'd given her mouth to mouth and everything. And I took her to this dude's house and just some stranger's house in Lincolnton, man. And, uh, you know, it's fucking, I don't know what time it is. I'm have no shirt on. I'm half drunk. Um, and I don't know. I don't fucking know. She's not breathing. I gave her mouth to mouth. She started, she won't breathe and call the cops and dude, it was fucking nuts. They get there. They're taking her off in the thing. She, and I, I'm, can I use your phone? I call my mom and I tell him what happened. I remember I'm like, I had a test in political science at Augusta State the next day. That's where my brain was. <laughs> that tells you anything. That's what I was so concerned about. Um, and and said, they, they said, hey, you got to come take a breath. I said, okay, mama, I'll, mama, I got to take a blow test. I'll call you back. I love you. I didn't talk to her for almost two years. Um, mm. And... Uh, Man, I uh, 
I remember they they went. I blew a point oh six. A point oh six. Once again, yeah. I, I didn't fucking do anything, and I'll never forget, man. They said, "Come with me," and and, and I said, "Okay." And he took me over to the car, and then he kind of, oh shit, what? And he said, and he grabbed my hands, and and I knew, you know, I knew what it was. And that dude guy, I don't know if you've ever had that feeling before. <clears throat> Man, I was on probation. I was already on probation in two counties. I was out on motherfucking bond in South Carolina on felony dope charges. I'm already on felony probation. If that gets revoked, that's three. Shit, man. Nah, dog. Can't go down like that. Not me. You're going to <laughs> you gonna be- catch me? You're going to have to beat your feet, fat boy. Boom! As soon as he went to grab for them fucking uh, cuffs, I bucked. And I'll never forget it was it was starting to sprinkle. And I I remember five cop cars being there. Five cop cars, an ambulance, and a goddamn fucking fire truck. Um uh, and I'll never forget, I went boom and I took off and I slipped and I fell. <laughs> I was barefooted, no shirt, barefooted. Um and I they started laughing and I got up and I fell again. And I remember this <laughs> where you gonna go, boy? Don't run. And I said, fuck it. Gotta go. Pew. And I took <laughs> off. Um, I, just for time's sake, I'm not going to tell you the whole story of that night. But I ran 20-something miles that night and got a ride home in the most insane way imaginable. <laughs> okay. Like, the, the, the things in the the sprinting across an open field in the moonlight because you think the dogs are chasing you and not seeing the barbed wire fence. Mm. Shit like that. Um, and just, it was pretty nuts. And uh, I was 19. Um, and uh, I ran away that night and I had uh, $7 and a mini Bic lighter in my pocket. And that was it. Did you leave town? I was in Kentucky three days later. Wow. And you were on the run for how long? About, so that was September. I want to say September. And they caught me two days. So let's see, that was September of 07, I believe. Um, And they caught me two days after my 21st birthday. So... It's about it's around uh, it's around twenty months, man. Um, wow! And I uh, I was a fugitive, man. What was that? Like, what was that feeling like? Man? Like that experience of just. Hey, I'm gonna being tell you something, guys. I'm gonna put this in perspective for you. Have you ever run a marathon? Yeah, a uh, short one. <laughs> you were oh. <laughs> point. What you? No. <laughs> a, a half marathon. <laughs> Well, here's no, what I, I probably you, I probably run a 5K. Yeah, like all right. when I was younger. So you have in your head a conception of what it feels like to run 26 miles without stopping, but you have no fucking clue. Is what I'm trying going to tell you. Just like everybody who ever stepped in the ring with Conor McGregor thought they knew what it would be like to be in there with him until they woke up unconscious. Mm-hmm. Like I cannot tell you. I just, I'm writing the book now and I just call it the dreads. Like I cannot describe, have you ever had anxiety? Anybody ever had a panic attack? You ever had one that's fucking real? (laughs) Like that's what I'm, that's what I'm (laughs) trying to tell you. Have you ever had one that was real? I'm literally running for my fucking life and everything that I know and love is gone and I'm alone. And I have nothing. And there's people looking for me. Do you feel like that the whole time? Or was that something you got over? Here's what I'm going to tell you, man. Being a fugitive is, is you can get no rest. Anytime. You know, the feeling of, dude, it, hap- it would happen sometimes. You know, I had some good times, man. I hit some licks. You know, I worked hard. I, that's, that's when I got in trade work. Really. Um, you know, that's kind of ironic that I'm an investor through trade work. Um, but, uh, I, uh, <coughs> you know how it feels on a, a Friday afternoon on a sunny fall day, beautiful weather. You got paid, you got some money in the bank. 
motherfucking 50 Cent is playing on the radio. You know what I mean? <laughs> and uh, you just driving down the road, and it's like a good day, and you're feeling good. I get that sometimes, and then all of a sudden, it hits you. You have no hope. You don't exist. I mean, that was it. Like, you have no hope. You can't live, like... I'm a wanted man. I don't have a driver's license. At any point, if I need any essential service, I'm fucked. I can go to the hospital. Yeah. I, I was terrified right. to go get my, my prescription. I was out on bond. Bounty hunters. Yeah. You know, I mean, like, you yeah. know, I, I never had anyone look for me that I noticed, but I was on felony bond. It's five grand on my head, dog. I mean, that was a lot of money. You know, t- shit, I'd go find your ass for five grand right now, Cletus. Shit. <laughs> 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 Get in his van, but uh, <laughs> it, it's <sighs> miserable, man. And just the just like I said, imagine a, a a panic attack that that's real, and contemplating yourself. This is a knowing that I feel terrible, and the feeling is valid and 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 proper. Mm-hmm. And I, te- I dude, I fu- I ran away. I jumped. My parents bonded me out of jail, and I ran away and wasn't turning myself in. They put their house up, and I'm dipping. Like you got to understand. And, but I, like I told you, I didn't fucking do anything. I just, in some chivalrous notion, why, what, why, why you're a fucking idiot, Joe. But man, that's one of my strengths. and Also one of my weaknesses, man, is when I do something, I go all in. And if I love somebody, I don't give a fuck. (laughs) Like that's how I am, dude. Um, I'm a very intense person. Uh, I probably didn't have to tell you that, but I mean, it was the only option at that time. Your woman's getting, you know, you you can't, you got to take that on the chin, big dog. And, uh, ah, man, just tough. It's tough. I cried a lot uh, those days. It was dark days, man. I got into pills. <laughs> I mean, I did a lot of drugs. Yeah. I'm sure. I mean, yeah. yeah. Did you have a hard time trusting, trusting people during that time? Like you'd almost think that everybody could be somebody who's trying to, maybe take you down, turn you in, that kind of thing. Yeah. Like while you're on the run. Yeah. Fuck yeah, man. Like I'm so, dude, going to the grocery store. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm saying. You don't understand. You wear a hat everywhere and sunglasses and you're just a nobody. You know, that's what I'm saying. You're you're it, you ain't going nowhere unless it looks like the pleasure barge off of fucking Star Wars. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> Like you're not going to places that are above board, man. And you just kind of blend into the part of society that's a throwaway, man. I was a throwaway. I was a fugitive, man. Less than a few years prior, I was at UGA on two full ride scholarships with a bank account, a car. I mean, everything. I was popular as an athlete and I'm on the run from the motherfucking law. Crazy. (laughs) You want to talk about a Stark? And all I was, I was a barefooted country boy. I was out there at the lake drinking having fun and uh, like i said i never did anything dumb or like except one i wasn't out there acting a goddamn fool i wasn't doing shit so what was the point where you were caught or turned yourself in so after the 20 months man i uh i got caught i i run from them again i'll never forget when i took off that time when they went to pull me over in that car um (laughs) i i got pulled over in a church parking lot and they caught me in a church parking lot. Uh, here's a Joe Fells saying. You could quote this. Uh, it's probably just a coincidence, just like everything else in my motherfucking life. Uh, just, but I, I was got pulled over that church parking lot, and I slowed down and I, I put that bit, that old cutlass, I put it at a neutral, and I left it rolling right at that church, and I jumped out that door and gave them some shit to worry about, and I took off. Gone. <laughs> and uh, did you have a huh? did you have an alias like a different name at that time that you were going by? Jay. <laughs> Jay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people call yeah, me Jay. Cool. I mean, it, Jay. Uh, that's really yeah. Did uh, did you stay in Kentucky the whole time, or did you go to different? No, states? I came. I came back to Georgia. Not long after Kentucky is a Commonwealth state. Uh, I don't know if it is now at the time it was my bounty hunters can't go there. So it made sense. Okay. Makes sense. Did you have any close calls like in that 20 month period where you almost got caught? I ran from the police two more, three times. 
So I've run from I ran from him three times in that period. Uh, and they caught me that last time. What was that like? The, where they actually took you down? I hate losing, dog. Hey, but like I said, I I can beat like I'm telling you. Uh, and policemen, you know, they're public ser- servants. Um, a lot of them come from, you know, some of the worst parts of society. Like <laughs> they really do, man. And uh, they're all just people like me when they go home and take their costume off. I mean, and I drag the shit out of the vast majority of them. But when there's 14 of them and they have fucking radios, it's kind of hard, big dog. Um, <laughs> and I, I zigged when I should have zagged, man. They caught me in a church parking lot. Um, I'll never forget sitting in the back of that that cruiser, man. I was sitting there like this. They were like, what's your name? Fuck you. What's your name? I just looked at him. What's your name? Shut the door. What's your name? Shut your name. Shut the door, please. So you did have an alias. No, yeah. yeah hey, <laughs> just, I mean, take me to jail, dog. You gonna find out who I am when we get there. Just take me to jail, motherfucker. There ain't none of us to talk about him. Did you have any relief when you were caught? I've read, I've you know read that from people that sometimes like people who <laughs> yeah, well, commit murder or something well, have a relief when they get caught eventually. Well, I'm gonna tell you yes and no. Yes, I did feel relief. Um, but you know, the brain has an amazing way of coming up with coping strategies to keep you from hanging yourself. Like, <laughs> I'm going to tell you, Hey, uh, let me find the pros in this prison cell. I mean, yeah, man. Like there was a sense of relief kind of like, I don't know the sense of relief you feel when you take one massive diarrhea and you have a bunch more behind it. I mean, like, <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. That's a great. Uh, that was a great kidney stone. Can't wait to get the rest of them out. Fuck. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so yeah, I, I, I did, man. I'll, I'll never forget. That's what I did. I, I went and I, I remember I was reading a house. I mean, a, a book called the house of sand and fog by Andre Du Bois, right Good there. Book. Uh, you read, it? that's what I was reading. The yeah. first, well, the most memorable book I read, I was in I had so many chemicals in my system. I had to spend the first 72 hours in the butt naked cell. Fuck. God, guys. That's tough. And you wonder how I'm such a fucking savage. Now that I'm talking about it, well, God damn. What the fuck do you expect? You chased me. I was a, I was a creature, man. And I remember, hey, I come off of fucking heroin and pills of all benzodiazepines, hard withdrawals in a butt naked cell for 72 hours in a suicide smock. It's a fucking padded cell, right? All the way around. It's a padded cubicle, like an eight by 10. There is nothing in this except a hole in the floor with a grate in it for you to shit in. They keep it 68 degrees and all you are given is a suicide smock, which is specifically designed for this one purpose. If you're going to kill yourself, you're going to do it wearing this, buddy. It's going to drive you crazy. You cannot in no way, shape or form get completely comfortable. There's always cold air hitting you at all hours. They give you a blanket at 10 p.m. and they take it away at 6. And they come and three times a day, your your fucking food is put through a fucking port at the door. And then they're given that. If you have to shit, you just go shit in the hole and you have to go beat on the door until they flush it. And they never are in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Welcome to jail. So that was your... uh... That was where you detoxed, basically, or I guess started to detox. That's tough, man. That's so tough. <laughs> that's tough. At, yeah, that's yeah, that's that's pretty fucked up. So after the three days of that, what happened to you? Where did you go? Then I went to C Max, which is single cell. You're in there by yourself. Um, I. Uh, it's just a. Uh, you know, a regular dorm, man. Uh, I think it was three tier, two or three tier cells. And you're just there by yourself. And I was there for a month just in a isolation. Then they put me in gin pop, um, in Columbia County. Now I will say this. If you have to pick a jail, I would highly recommend Columbia County. The butt naked <laughs> wing was not very nice, but the rest of it was by jails go pretty fucking nice. Like, I'll be honest with you. I gained like 40 pounds in nine months. <laughs> like, I mean, I was, I was a porker <laughs> when I hit the chain gang dog. <laughs> I'm telling you. Um, uh, they, I remember they had these little drink fountains <laughs> over on the side 
with a little thing that shot it up and it trinkled down on the sides. You can go over there and fill up your little cups and you could smoke cigs. And the sheriff over there, uh, I think it was Clay Whittle. I don't know. I don't know. He's an asshole, whoever he is, but uh, he had a good theory. Um, he, he said, I will never tell them they can't smoke cigarettes as long as I smoke cigarettes. And he had a point. If motherfuckers are in jail, at least let them smoke cigs. It'll keep them from stabbing each other, you fucking assholes. Like, God damn. Yeah. Um, so it was pretty chill. Like, we ate really well, dude. Um, and it was pretty cush. It was, there weren't any fights. Like, I mean, it was laid back. It was like a, a day camp where I was. Um, and uh, then they shipped me out, man. I, I got a, a 15 do 5. Um 15 years, 10, uh, five in and 10 on probation. And, uh, they come in to shit me out, dog. They don't tell you when you're sentenced, man. I'll never for forget being sentenced. Oh, <sighs> text Alex, get me another beer, please. <laughs> <laughs> Needed it. <laughs> Need it for this one? Tough. Well, while you wait for that beer, did you have? And we haven't really talked about any type of a trial. You met, you're ta obviously talking about sentencing. What was your trial like? <laughs> did you have a trial? Man, let me just go on and tell you. <laughs> um, I uh, I uh, I remember talking about public defender the first time. And uh, that's a big thing in jail. Oh, your uh, your lawyer's coming. Oh shit! So like it's the equivalent of a conjugal visit, dog. Um, <laughs> you know they get your public defender showed up. Oh, damn, it's like daddy coming home in jail. Anyways, <coughs> I fucking went to see him, and he uh, <laughs> I remember he sat down. His name was David Brucker, Brunker, blonde guy, really a pretty good guy, but bless his heart he looked at the file and he said all right sir um i see here you're on probation for three felonies here you're on bond for a drug felony here and here you were pulled over you got out with the bag you ran with the bag you got caught with the bag it was full of drugs <laughs> how may i help you <laughs> that's what he did and like and i was like uh can you give me a plea bargain he was like that's what i was thinking like like yeah man <laughs> yeah makes sense I was looking at 55 years with all, you know, you know, that was the max they could sentence me to. 55 and, uh, years. That's nuts. My That's uncle so actually crazy. got me two years knocked off of my sentence, man. I, I can't, yeah. I can't tell you that one. He did, but my uncle Paul, I just want to credit him there. He got two years knocked off my sentence. I'll be forever grateful. Um, you know, he's an asshole and we butt heads a lot. But uh, he did, man. He showed up when it mattered. I'll give him that. So so just for our audience, how much time did you actually spend in jail? So you got sentenced, obviously. Maybe I we did. can circle back to your sentencing after you get a drink. But how long did you actually get uh, sentenced for? How much time did you do in jail? I did uh, 30 months in total. I did nine months in jail and then 20 months in the chain gang. <coughs> chain gang prison sorry that's a, a southern terminology and the more these i drink the more southern i sound you know? sorry. <laughs> when Nothing you're talking about that. when you're talking about prison sounding southern kind of helps you know so. yeah so so 30 months total in prison hey, you got your beer coming come here. here comes your beer you okay yeah hey how much weed's in those lemon things what the bars <laughs> yeah what you want you us to say? cut this part out? Hey, well, no, no, no. Hey, Alex, What'd you nice say? to meet you. <laughs> What'd you Hi, say? Alex, nice to meet you. I said how much weed's in the lemon things. <laughs> Look at me. Enough? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. That, that that was a trial match, literally. He doesn't know. Okay. Literally. There's a lot in there. And and that you can't you can't taste it either, can you? No, it's delicious. I know, but that you can't taste it. the weed. That's the whole thing. It's he doesn't know how strong they are. That's why I gave it. Are they strong? <laughs> <laughs> DJ Stilts, Portis, Home Run. <laughs> nice to meet you, Alex. Hey, Anthony nice to meet Portis. You, Alex. 
have fun. Yeah. Enjoy that night. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be a See fun a one. Lot. Okay. Thank you, baby. No. Hey, Anthony Portis, you just got a shout out, dog. <laughs> You're going to love that. That's going in your fucking portfolio. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I've completely did, lost track. <laughs> Go ahead, Corey. Did you... Um, I, I'm curious, like, if you met anyone in prison that was, like, I don't know, either inspiring or someone that scared the shit out of you. Like, what was the craziest experience you had in there? So there were... Oh, the craziest experience or the craziest person? Whichever. Whatever you want to talk about. I'm, I'm just curious about your experience. I'll give you a... Sh I'll tell you about the craziest experience. That was the full-scale riot. 